is that voice? Uh oh. Uh, don't maybe pull out the server mute PCO. <laughs> you you hear it in your sleep, don't you, Mo? <laughs> I do. I dread it. The questions. Oh man, of course I don't. I love questions. Did you, know, you I think? Think of me? <laughs> I got a question oh, for yeah. you, Mo, real quick. Yeah, sure, go for it. Um, so I've seen different communities kind of being interested in Futureverse and Readyverse. Um, a lot of them, I've seen Aaron or Shara retweet. They seem like they're interested. Some of them host some pretty decent spaces. Are you the person to get them in contact with if they want to schedule something? Yeah, absolutely. So we've put a database together with all the different hosts for spaces out there for all the different markets they're dealing with. I mean, you would have seen Aaron retweet one yesterday and uh, know all of the hosts for that show. They're very Web3 orientated. Um, but yes, uh, definitely, if anybody reaches out to you, you can put them in contact with me. My DMs are always open on, on X, which is definitely the best way to go. Um, but yeah, I'm already in contact with most of these people. It's just about lining it up at the right time. And uh, you might have seen an XRP community post go out saying Aaron will be joining them. And that's March 1st. He certainly will. So yeah, absolutely. If anyone has interest yeah. to speak to, to Shah or Aaron, um, put them through to me. I can help with that. You talked to Amelia, right? Is that the one you were saying Aaron retweeted yesterday? Yeah, because he does the reset um, with Dave and um, yeah, oh, I invited Meta, Meta, Meta Mona and those guys. I invited him to uh, Root Radio on Friday, um, and he's like, "Hell yeah, I'll bring a bunch of people." Um, been looking to do a spaces with y'all, so this is a perfect introduction. So hopefully, that's like a warm intro to the community, and then you know it can further expand into one of their spaces. So just wanted to make sure I was pointing people in the right direction. Absolutely. And the more that these hosts and spaces cross over into the other lanes, you know, because I want to see as many of the XRP community, you know, at Root Radio spaces as I do our Futureverse community at the XRP space. But that also moves over into, like you said, like Dave's show, um, The Reset. You know, it'd be great to have all these people like across the different times because you know, there's so much to cover in this space that if one of them is going to be really heavy AI focused, then, you know, you need to be in that space. And that's what the sort of thing I'd imagine the reset will be more about um, the Web3 technology. You know, it's going to be about how our identity is protected and how our data is shared, where the XRP space will be more about the root network and protocols and, and all, that, all that good stuff. But, uh, oh, it looks like we've got Alex in the room. Alex. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good to be here. Um, thanks, as usual, everyone, for joining. Um, it's great to be back. Um, was off sick last week, uh, unfortunately. Um, came down with norovirus, which is not fun. Um, if anyone hasn't had it, I don't suggest going and getting it. Um, but I appreciate all the kind words and, uh, you know, movie suggestions and everything that came in from the community. Um, I saw there was a question from, uh, I think, Atari in there, um, just asking what movies I was watching. I actually uh, caught up on a few different shows, but uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once was just a mind-blowing mental movie and highly recommended if you haven't actually uh, seen that one yet. Alex, I you recommended it. Um, so I watched it. My wife watched it as well. We did not know what the hell was going on. Did we enjoy it? Yeah, I think we did. Um, at the same time, I think it raised more questions than it gave answers. But I think it's time to kick this show off. So let's push record wherever we need to. Welcome to 30 Minutes Max. This is where we endeavor to answer the questions from the community. It's being hosted right now on Futureverse Discord, where you can also submit your questions in the 30 Minutes Max channel. We've got a lot to cover today, but I just want to get straight into it, Alex. Alex, yep. Yep. big week. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, I'm always astounded by the amount that we're shipping, um, as was evidenced in Max Poker's post yesterday, just doing a recap of the past week. You know, obviously, there's been a lot of quests, uh, engagement score, um, future past dashboard updates, future past news, TNL brain swapping, teasers for races, new swappables blog. You know, we've, we've been busy and there's, there's plenty more to come. 
um, as we've got some more exciting launches coming down the pipeline. Um, but in the meantime, actually just want to give a shout out to the, the root scan team. Um, you guys may have seen that launched recently built by uh, the team at Sanctum. Um, and actually just as of today, you've seen they've put in an update for reports, uh, which allows you to export all your transactions as a CSV, uh, which is something I know a lot of you guys have been after. Um, so really great as always to see new builders, um, new kind of tools coming onto the network. Um, just a small note on that, it seems like there might be a little bit of um, incorrect labeling going on with some of the data, but that feedback has already been passed back onto the team and is already being reviewed. Um, and also just a reminder, if you guys actually want to see existing third-party tools integrate the root network, whether they're, you know, crypto tax tools, dApps, whatever, um, the best way to do that is actually go and request to their teams directly. Um, you know, that's where we see the most success is just a, a natural organic community push um, requesting on their side. Um, and we can actually look at setting up a, a section in the TRN Discord where people can share the kind of third-party tools that they want um, to integrate TRN, and we can kind of rally the community around those to, to coordinate your requests um, to those third parties. Also, uh, another little bit of housekeeping. If you guys, uh, if anyone's looking at attending South by Southwest this year, um, you will have seen that we've got the Readyverse founding team uh, will all be speaking there. Um, so if any of you are looking at going, um, please let us know in, there's a new South by Southwest channel in the international forum of Futurist Discord. Um, jump in there, let us know that you're going, and uh, we can see uh, about, you know, maybe doing a community meetup or something along those lines. Um, I think that's all the housekeeping for now, so we'll jump straight into questions. Absolutely, and a little exciting news for the end of questions today. We've got Aaron McDonald, CEO and co-founder of Futureverse, with us in the chat today. So. As soon as we get through these questions, we can get Aaron up on stage and you can ask some questions yourself if you choose to. Or he might just want to tell us what he's most excited about because we all love to hear that as well. But without further ado, I'm Momenta, also known as Scotty from Marketing. You just heard from Alex Smale, the VP of Community, and you're going to be hearing from Aaron McDonald a little bit later on. First question, congrats on boarding public validators. The minimum stake amount is 100K root. This is high. It makes sense. I look forward to running a validator, but unfortunately I don't have enough. Oh, that's, that's hard. What will be, with that being said, can we possibly get a min max staking amount for the seeker nodes before they roll out? And thanks. Keep building. Um, yeah, thanks. I mean, to your first point, um, if you are an experienced node operator, but you don't have the sufficient root holdings, you could always look at forming a partnership with other holders or something similar, just as an idea. Um, in regards to seeker nodes, I saw there was actually a couple questions on this, but we've kind of clumped them together. Um, these are still being kind of designed, uh, but we are kind of looking to design them to make them um, simpler to run than a TRN node, but we'll release more information and quite a comprehensive guide to all of that as we get closer to the rollout. We love the seekers. All right, next question. Last year, I suggested Futureverse create an Instagram broadcast group to provide another channel to target normies. Any updates? Um, that's actually it's a good idea. I didn't see that um, suggestion come through previously, but I'll certainly add it to our list. Um, obviously, there's just so many social channels and that popping up all the time, but that is that does seem like quite a good channel for us to target, especially, as you say, to kind of cut through um, to normies. So, yeah, I'll definitely take that back to the team and, and see if that's something that we'll um, look to establish. All right, good one. Any updates on email only FuturePass signups? Um, yep, that's uh, one of the next major releases um, planned for FuturePass. Um, so you'll see that coming through soon enough, but I can't give any definitive timeline on that at the moment. Now, I know we're all excited about engagement score. So I've got a bunch of engagement score that, questions we'll, here. We'll, we'll be launching social logins as part of the Reebok campaign. So Ooh. Timing wise is imminent it's there we it's go been, it's an audit and sorry it's been through audit and we're now um prepping for first use as part of that which very nice right. first bit of alpha there from aaron already so if you didn't catch that yet the um emails and social logins is all part of the reebok campaign launch as well um, which has been audited 
Good one. And Aaron, if you can step a little closer to your mic or speak up or turn it up, um, that will also help as well. Appreciate Sorry. it. Yeah, I'm getting over a bit of a cold, so my voice is a bit quiet. The whole team, the whole team have been uh, have been powering through. I have to say, absolutely powering through. All right. Um, okay. How is engagement score protected as to not be exploited by bots? Um, yeah, this is something we've considered a lot, and um, in basically every case so far, it's actually required some kind of financial expenditure from the user. So it's not something that's, you know, um, well, there's an actual financial outset so that mitigates spots. Um, other protections we put in place in the future as we roll out different types of engagement score. If we keep participating, does the engagement score decrease or does constant participation stop the engagement score from decreasing? The engagement score is designed to decay over time, but participation can earn more engagement score, but we, that's, we don't really reveal anything more about the workings behind future score than that. I imagine we'll go the same way for this next question. Uh, what constitutes engagement? Is it quest specific? Uh, do we do it with Grumble, TNL, AFA? They've listed a whole bunch of things. What constitutes engagement? Yeah, um, I mean, well, we'll uh, at the appropriate time, we'll put out you know announcements about new factors that can play into engagement score, like socials, for example. Um, but we don't intend to ever reveal the specifics of what does and doesn't. It's all part of playing the game. Will engagement score be gated to asset or collectible holders? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, part of the reason for introducing engagement score was to allow more opportunities for newcomers to get involved with quests and kind of get a taste for everything that we're doing. And that will, you know, therefore entice them to dive in more fully. Yeah, I think it's really important to understand that, you know, the value that um, we create in the network is proportional to engagement at some point. And so the more engagement we can get, whoever it's from, the more value it adds to the network. And we need to try and recruit as many people into that as possible to drive that outcome. And I think if you, um, you know, if you look at the way engagement scores constructed, um, it, it generally, like um, Alex said, requires some kind of transaction spending. Um, which generates value for everyone directly in, in Vortex, but also indirectly in network activity. And so we want to try and make that as broad as possible. Of course, the highest weighting when we kind of um, pay out quest rewards is always geared towards um, collectible, your collectible score. And so it's a way to get people new it new people in and add value to everyone but um but separating those two components allows us to to treat engagement differently from a rewards perspective to um to the uh, collectible score just a heads up monty your mic is unmuted good one shilla uh -huh. give us a wag me give us a wag me while you're here uh, 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 wag me <laughs> yeah beautiful beautiful brother <laughs> love it ah, doing doing god's work you are my friend all right um going forward will there be caps on engagement bonuses um i mean i think this is a bit more around the um the context of this in terms of the pb um engagement score and that was a bit of a unique situation as it was applied in a way to ensure that we weren't kind of punishing people for our mistake um in future applications of engagement score will be more fairly balanced around that but caps i don't think is is something that we would be committing to just as someone who has said engagement about 15 times now will we be able to call this <laughs> E-score? E is E-score a thing? We might have to get a poll going or something. Not sure how the big wigs in marketing are going to feel about that, but okay, we won't call it E-score just yet. Yeah, um, I mean, if we keep throwing that word around, my, my girlfriend might get a bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. Will we be able to combine engagement score with multiple wallets? Um, so it's designed that if you have multiple future passes and combine their future scores, the, only the engagement score from one will be counted. And this is done so to prevent engagement farming. 
Um, but that's constantly being kind of reviewed and, and make sure that that's designed as fairly as possible. Good one. Okay. Moving a little bit further away from engagement score now, are there any plans for in-game currency such as junk and Asto Energy to be visible in future passes? Yeah, um, non-token balances uh, is definitely something that we're, we'll work into future versions, um, and they will, um, especially with the, the launch of the kind of upcoming ASM games, um, it's also important to, to kind of, you know, future pass the vision for that long term goes far beyond just, you know, the basic of showing what tokens you have you know, on chain. It's really about the broader management of your uh, digital identity as well. All right, staying with tokens for just a moment. Is the SENS burn going to start in March? Also, where can I find further details about the burn mechanism? Um, yep, so that's uh, still planned to start in March. The current info um, is, the latest info is just the one that was shared in the blog post at the end of last year. Um, I'll link this as a reply in the channel. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more information coming out um, on that pretty soon. Right, next question's for the party people. Uh, will there be any fluff parties or events? We get this every week, Alex, every <laughs> week. Will there be any fluff parties or events for Consensus 2024 in Austin this year? The event last year in NYC was super fun and we'd love another. Buddy? Um, so no plans at this point for parties. Um, we are there for industry. Um, so back to back with studios, IP holders, brands, et cetera. Um, but we're still looking at doing meetups at other events during the year. Um, and as I touched on before, you know, if you are going to South by Southwest, let us know. Um, for example, we can um, look at maybe just a community meetup or something like that at this stage. Always an option. All right. Just move over to Quest Rewards for a moment. Will Quest, quest Rewards be paid based on future score at the time of the quest? or at the time of the payment? Um, so quest rewards are paid out based on the user's future score at the time of quest closing, unless stipulated otherwise. Uh, the one exception to this was the past two quests that just closed, which were paid out uh, based on a later snapshot due to the various updates that we had to work through. Um, for most people, this actually meant a greater um, rewards root reward than was originally expected. Um, but we are aware that there are a few people that had their future score drop between the closing of the quest and the snapshot due to whether it was selling collectibles, unlinking wallets or whatever. Um, and we are working through those and support tickets to ensure that they're resolved properly. Beautiful. How is Futureverse TV going? Can we still expect any of these this month? Is Krogo still hosting? Uh, yeah, so we've evolved uh, Futurist TV a bit based on the feedback that we've received um, from the community after those initial episodes, and we're currently working on the next episode, uh, which is um, looking to, well, we'll put some, some comms out uh, next month on that. Good one. All right. Moving into the AI field for a moment here. How is Gen structured relative to Futureverse ownership interests? Some questions for Ready, same question for Readyverse. Um, I'll, take yeah, this... I'll take this one, Alex. Sure. I mean, without being too blunt, it's none of your business. <laughs> like Futureverse is a is a company, and our corporate structure and how we conduct business between our entities really isn't anything to do with the public, open source projects and content that we're creating. And so, while it might be a benign question, and I could easily answer it, and there'd be no issue with that. I think just to set the tone for what we should be expected to cover, that this isn't one of those things. The internal operations of our business are commercially um, sensitive and it's not something we go out and talk in public about. Well said. I know we're all learning more about how these different operations work together, but they're also separate entities at times as well. So this is the future verse conversation we're having here. So let's try and keep it Futureverse orientated. Obviously, we all want to know what's going on in the space because it's really exciting. But also within Futureverse, we're a business and the way we operate as a business is our business. You know, um, we're happy to share about how our products work and how, how we're thinking about things and 
when we announce our partners, talk about those partnerships and have, um, you know, feedback on and suggestions and how we think we can do better job of building things or marketing things like all of that stuff is great stuff. But what's off limits is how we conduct our, our business as a private company. Well said. All right. Any indication when it will be possible to transfer party bear accessories to other wallets? Um, yes. So the ability for transferring semi fungible tokens like uh, party bear accessories is planned for an upcoming update, uh, but I can't confirm specific timing at this stage. It's pretty close, though. We had um, the pallet. Um, the pull requests for the pallet update went went through yesterday. Um, so we've got to do some soak testing and um, and make sure that it's fit to promote to to mainnet, but it's, it's looking pretty good. There's a whole bunch of changes in there for semi-fungible tokens that um, don't just enable transferring, but um, enable um, trading um, that will be ported into marketplaces like Mark as well. Yep. Bit complex, um, just so that everyone knows, you know, we have to deal with um, the way that trading an asset or transferring an asset affects a bundle um, so that when users are looking at something that they're buying, they know that they're getting the thing that is being presented to them. Um, and so we, we can make sure that the links in the asset register, et cetera, that um, help applications render that content displaying the right information relative to what the user actually owns. For all the community who are here today listening to this, who show up every single week to 30 minutes max, it's nice to have, it, nice to have Aaron here. You know, this is a little treat for you guys. You know, you're getting the alpha, so brilliant. Not that it's really alpha, it's just more information that we, we love to hear. All right, my questions have just changed in front of my very eyes. All right. What happens if I sell a TNL boxer with traits equipped and a linked brain? Same question for moving between wallets. Um, I mean, that, that plays into what Aaron was just talking about um, as well. Um, but although currently the brains, especially with brains being on Ethereum, um, brains themselves um, will become unlinked when selling. We'll post some more information around this in the FAQs with the, the TNL game launch as well. <clears throat> yeah, it's another thing just to keep a hold on. So like when we build these experiences, I think the best way to think about it is that we're openness maxis. Um, and so we want to try and make them work as well as possible between chains, you know, as more people join the ecosystem. Um, they might choose to have their assets in one place or another. Um, we'd still want those to be interoperable with the application layer and with things like swappables, et cetera. Um, but the very best experience is going to be a native on route experience. So if both, you know, primary asset and swappable asset sit on route, then that's going to be the best, um, the best possible user experience because we can get the deepest interaction and integration there with things like asset register. If it spans between chains, then it'll work, it just won't be as elegant um, in, in, um, in our ability to influence the way the other chain deals with those things. So um, so kind of expect maybe two types of experiences, one for like all native um, en route, like party bears, and then one for, um, for say cross chain stuff like TNL. And TNL actually has potentially both use cases because broad boxes could be bridged to, to root as well. That plays beautifully into our next question, which is bridging is fairly costly at the moment with one seeker costing around $30. Is there a plan for low or no cost transfers of collectibles to the root network? I mean, no cost transfers would be incredible, but that's just not feasible with how networks work. It's really out of our control um, as we don't control gas on other networks like Ethereum, which is why we've tried to reduce the need for this where possible as Aaron just touched on as well, you know, we want to ensure that there's um, as much cross-chain interoperability with a lot of these experiences, but, um, you know, the experiences will often work best if everything is TRN native, 
Um, and in terms of, you know, the seekers bridging, um, we are exploring uh, bulk um, approval and bridging functions as well, just to streamline that a little bit. All right, a few more questions to go, guys. Then get ready if you want to come up on stage and ask Aaron anything. It's great to have him here. All right. Has there been any development of FuturePass wallet being able to read contents of connected wallets? Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, based on the last conversations I've had, that's something that is in the backlog, um, but we can't give any further updates on that at this stage. Can you attach a brain to more than one boxer? Uh, no, a brain can only be equipped to one boxer at a time. What did Mark update? I'm not sure. That sounds like a question for Mark. Um, but I know, as we touched on before, the, um, the semi-fungible token support will be coming down the line soon. They're also working just... a whole bunch of new streaming commerce features, um, and we've got some more um, variations of um, stream play coming in as well for different kinds of um, use cases. Sounds great. Now, is there any difference between attaching a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 brain to a boxer? Um, I mean, the stats are shown in real time uh, when you choose which brain to attach when you're in the, the locker room. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this next one. Can we have some more options for rugged NFT projects to burn for junk? Um, I think that's coming down the pipeline. Um, don't know if we can confirm when that's happening yet, though. All right, I'm into Definitely my last question here. You want to do. There's a whole bunch of new mechanics coming into Grumble um, and different kinds of match setups and stuff like that that will um, encourage more communities to come in and, and join the party on that side of things. And, and so being able to enable them to engage in different ways, um, even if it's not necessarily a, con a connection burn, I think will be... Um, sorry, an NFT burn, I think, will be a number, like three or four new ways that um, we can get other communities to come and start to participate in Grumble. Perfect. All right, this is my last question, guys. So get those fingers poised on the unmute button and get ready to come up afterwards because it's a Grumble question, and I'm really enjoying Grumble. I've got a new goblin out there. He's called Exaltinator. Watch out for him. He'll get you. <laughs> All right. Grumble has been down a lot more recently almost daily over the last week. Can you talk to that at all? Are more people playing? Um, I mean, we've definitely seen an uptick in, in people playing recently, especially with the launch of the recent quest um, and actual good retention on that as well, you know, not just one-offs. Um, in terms of the downtime, yeah, this is something that we're aware of. We're actually in the process right now of upgrading um, the hardware to try and completely um, remove that downtime altogether. Wonderful. And that concludes the Q&A section from myself and Alex. But, I mean, we've got Aaron here today. I'm not even sure what you want to talk to us or share with us today. Aaron, um, do you want to kick things off by, I don't know, what you're most excited about or why you chose to come and join us today? I know. I, I think um, I kind of came to, to hear from people and have given them the opportunity to ask me questions. I mean, I think if you've been following me on Twitter, um, you'll see what I'm excited about at the moment. Um, you know, we're getting very close now to demonstrating some of the um, awesome stuff the team's been working on over the years that, yeah, sorry, that will kind of, I think, fundamentally change the way um, the metaverse is constructed. And so um, it's getting me pretty pumped to see this these ideas start to actually show up in some of the applications that and proof of concepts that the teams have been building and and know that that we've got beyond you know the thinking and designing stage into like having something that practically can work so yeah very very excited um about what's going on there and kind of being close to being able to show some i think quite groundbreaking things all right do we have anybody in the audience who wants to come up and ask a question just unmute speak over the top of each other if you have to but we'll there's no structure to this format let's go yeah, yeah. Hey guys, EWT here. Um, hear you loud and clear. Cool, cool, perfect. See now coming out. When are we able? To... Brain. 
I missed half that question. Did you get any of it, Aaron? I said I could hear you yeah, loud and clear that it I, cut I out. I missed it too, yeah. Oh, yeah can, you hear me? can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Yes. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, uh, with, with, uh, <laughs> with, with, when, when, when can we uh, get into your brain? Oh, it's a miss. It's cryptic, isn't it? Um, Are you saying when can you equip a Gen Two brain? Uh, not a not equip. So, I think he's saying more, mine. Yeah, getting more mining. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this question's been asked quite a number of times, and the answer's still the same. We've been really making sure that we focus on getting some of the initial utility out before we put more brains into population. Um, we're, um, we're going to be also releasing the ASM, I don't, I'm going to call it white paper 2.0 because, um, because the kind of fundamental ideas of the white paper stand, st stand kind of, um, steady, but, um, an update to how we're, um, how we've progressed in innovating on those core principles and what sort of technology improvements and protocol improvements we're bringing to the table. And so in that you'll see a lot more um opportunities for brains than we initially imagined and once we start to get those things out then i think it'll be um you know time to start turning on that that um capability again you know try and match the demand, demand with supply as much as possible okay perfect no thanks for that and um also because i'm a thingy fan mm. i don't know sort of a background important yet for you guys when can we start getting seeing that route to um create art um i, I think yeah no i think i understood that so when can we can you mint or use the thingies art um creation process on root and pay with root yes correct yeah um, I don't actually have a hard date for that. We've been working on some other utility for thingies as a, as a higher priority. So um, be sharing some of that, um, I'd say, next month. Um, and 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 hopefully that kind of gets people like excited um, while we figure out, well, not figure out, but kind of just prioritize getting um, thingies migrated to root. We There was a bit of um, underlying tech that we had to build um, to make that process simpler for the developers on the on the front end, um, and that piece of tech I think actually goes live today with the races mint, um, and so now that's in place. It should be an easier job for us to migrate them across. Did you just drop a big bit of alpha there about what's happening today? I think it's live. Is it live yet? Shut the gate. Not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Man, who's vetting this guy before he comes on? Awesome, Aaron. This is why everyone's here, mate. They love to be early. And uh, when you're speaking, we're all early in the scene. Anybody else got some questions that could possibly promote more leaks? Hey, guys. Ron Teacher hey. here. Hello. Um, Good, mate. Aaron, thanks for, for being on today, Alex. Uh, always thank for, for your time uh, as well every week. Um, quick question, uh, racers coming out today. Uh, are we able to take our brains and equip it? Like if we're using a brain, that's good for one of our boxers. Can we still use that for the racers as well? The same brain. Sorry, I was muted. I'm pretty sure you can only equip them to one thing at a time, but I'll ne we'll need to double check on that one. Take that one back. All right, wonderful. Look forward to your answer. Thanks, Huff. Hey, guys, quick question. question. We've, uh, we've got one lonely fluff that lives on the root network at the moment. When will we, well, is it possible in the near future that we'll be uh, bridging fluffs as well, or more fluffs to the root network? You might be on mute, Aaron. Sorry. Um, I think um, kind of lining up with the um, position earlier around um, not not 
forcing bridging where it's not necessary. Um, I, th I think we'll, we'll make it available, but I'm not sure we'll ever um, make it mandatory. And so, um, so I think when we get to the point of um, having a good reason to, like we did with party beers for people to bring them across, is when we'll do something like that. Um, just opening it up so people can do it casually, I think it's on the list of things to do. Um, there's, there's a bit of work that has to happen each time a new NFT collection is bridged across at the moment. And so um, so there's kind of a backlog of, of, of stuff to do around each collection. Um, but um, I think I know the team's kind of working on tidying that up a little bit so we can kind of open it more broadly. Um, it's, I think it's more just been a priorities thing for us, like unless there's a good reason for it. Um, you know, from a utility point of view, we haven't really spent time on it. You can see there's been a lot on our schedule, um, you know, focused on things that are um, trying to add, you know, value to the overall ecosystem and leverage the content that's already out there as much as possible. And um, yeah, I think in the last year, more than more than 30, probably possibly more than 40 product launches and updates. And so we're trying to get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That ground, um, you know, uh, really? of technology and capability Jesus. out before we hot mic, hot mic down there, guys. Can someone jump on <laughs> before we jump into stuff like this? So, um, so yeah, no specific timing on it, and and when we do it, kind of be oriented around some some extra type of capability for the, you know, utility for the assets themselves. <laughs> Yeah, makes perfect sense. And you guys uh, no doubt been busy smashing out those um, product yeah. rollouts. So good work. Uh, and just in the interest of Crypto Eddie's fluff, it isn't lonely because I'm pretty sure Marco also bridged one over so that to keep her company. So I believe there's two fluffs there and, and they're very good friends and they're a good company. Okay. Next question. Well, I, I can jump hey. in here. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask when is Q1 so um set for gen one release or is that um still up up to like you guys it might be q2 we're, we'll announce product releases when they're released is kind of the way we're going forward like um the the especially with something like gen which is kind of a co-developed um or co-owned project it's not for us to kind of just unilaterally make those calls and tell people so and and something like that or readyverse studios you know where we've got partners involved we just have to stick to official product releases when we when we call this stuff out but i mean i can and you know from a product development perspective it's very advanced and and um and ready to ship at at the time that those announcements are ready to be made yeah thank you Regarding the games that we have, it feels that most of them are kind of AI based. And so I guess this is a, per, a question for like perspective of us who are like kind of the champions of Futureverse out there talking to people. How do we really view Futureverse? Is it something where, you know, obviously there's this big metaverse play, but how much of that AI aspect is ingrained? Is is the intention for all of these games to be AI uh, involved in a pretty significant capacity? And what else can we do uh, as a community to help get the word out? I mean, we AI is a very important part of what we um, build, and pretty much all of our products are engineered towards leveraging that because we think that's where the future of gaming is. I wouldn't look at Futureverse as a game studio, though. We're we're a platform company, and and we're out there to demonstrate what's possible with these tools and experiences, and so that others can come and build on top of that. Um, and so in terms of other kinds of experiences going forward, um, they're most likely going to be built by partners. Um, there'll be, you know, we'll be talking, um, about some of this stuff, um, at South by Southwest and giving people a little bit more look under the hood about some of the other very exciting, um, gameplay modes and experiences that are, that have been built on top of these tools in this platform. Um, but from our perspective, you know, the types of experiences that we are first party builders of are, are definitely very much um, engineered to showcase how this, how these platform products can work. 
I've actually got to jump, unfortunately. I've got another meeting. Um, I know that was quite quick. Um, but I can try and, and make some more time um, in the future to pop along to another one. Um, you know, and, yeah, and, that'd, uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome, mate. We've got so many spaces. Questions. You've got so many spaces coming up. We just got to make sure that all spaces the community. <laughs> All the community are in those spaces asking questions. You know, that's your opportunity too. These spaces aren't just for those other ecosystems to understand it. It's for you to get in there too and uh, and help drive the conversation in the right direction. So participate and share those spaces links when you see them out there. Thanks for joining us today, Aaron. Um, Thanks, everyone. We'll let you go, mate. And uh, Alex and I will wrap it up as well. Cheers to the questions, everybody. Cheers, Aaron. Hope you feel better soon. Bye. All right, Alex, you still here with me, buddy? Yes, sir. Oh, all right. What an action-packed show we had today. Um, anything else you'd like to cover before we wind things down? Um, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. So, um, yeah, expect races, uh, carts meant um, to come along imminently. Uh, we'll be dropping all the relevant information for that. Um, it is a an open mint, um, so it's not, you know, super time critical. Um, but just as a heads up, um, with the ability for people to claim cards um, against uh, ATOM cards or ASM Genesis brains, um, it might be worth, if you have any offers on those, um, to cancel those now because bad actors could potentially, you know, make the claim and then sell to an offer straight away. Um, so just a, a little bit of, um, I guess, best practices on that front. Yeah, that's that's some really good advice. Exciting. Well, in that case, I need to go and get organized for uh, what's coming up for the rest of the day. I would like to thank everybody for coming, especially those people who came up on stage and asked questions and helped drive this conversation. As Aaron said, there's so many spaces coming up. Those are open forums. Those are conversations that's being had live on X that we should all participate in because that's how we drive awareness to what's being built. And there's a lot to cover. So with that, thank you all for joining 30 Minutes Max. Last word from you, Alex, before we shut it down. Wag me. <laughs> yeah, what else could it be? <laughs> all right. We were going to get back to work. So have a great day, everyone. Good night, good evening, goodbye. Until next time, it's 30 Minutes Max and we're out.